think you you actually have to ask the question sort of above the um, what do I do if I'm okay with tracking error? Well, the, the question really is what do you believe about markets, asset classes, their returns, and the risk, right? So if you embark on different types of strategies, like a risk parity strategy is saying that the return of the asset is directly related to the risk or the volatility that it has, and, and that is the underlying basic assumption, and then you can go through minimum variance has a different set of assumptions. You can go through things like, well, how, how good do you think your forecasting is on various asset classes as you assim assemble the portfolio? And I think probably, Adam, you can wax and wane on this a little bit more, but you know, the, 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 um, uh, what's the paper that you wrote that really goes through that in detail about, you know, yeah, the portfolio got, optimization machine. Yeah, right, right. But which is, if you if you haven't read that, that would help answer that question. I don't care about tracking error. Okay, that's fine. What do you believe about markets? And then going through the portfolio optimization machine, there's a, there's a framework there where you go step by step and you make decisions. Do I believe this or do I believe that? And you go through a decision tree, and then lo and behold, you will have a decision where now your beliefs are congruent with what you're reflecting into your portfolio. And that should be the base of beta on which you would stack returns. If I were to think about a framework to, to put that through. Yeah. Can, I, can I add just one thing to that, which I would say, I don't think it's enough discussion, is human capital is an asset. And most people can model their human capital as some sort of bond, corporate bond. And you can decide whether how sensitive it is to default and that sort of stuff. But the reality is a lot of us are like, if you don't work in financial markets in particular, very long a corporate bond that should be taken into account in all of this discussion, right? When you're thinking about your investments and, and the liabilities you're trying to meet in the future, it should not just be about your investment capital. It should be about the combination of your human capital, which is yep. likely modeled as a bond, plus your investment capital. And if you can keep that holistic framework in mind, Right, you can probably get rid of a lot of bonds if you're young out of your investment portfolio because you have this huge long duration bond that is your human capital. And then again, a lot of the reason you see bonds come into the portfolio for someone who's approaching retirement is because their human capital duration sort of goes away and turns into an option of sorts, right? They have the option to go back to work. So I think for those who can maybe think a little bit more holistically about their financial planning, which is probably anyone listening to this podcast, especially if you got to it an hour and 15 minutes in, right? Mm -hmm. I would urge you to consider how that human capital element plays into it as well. I think, I think that's in the CFA, right? Are you a stock or are you a bond? Is that, that's the same sort of framework you're talking about, right? Or I'm writing put options personally. <laughs> <laughs> we all are, brother. Yeah. Along the straddle, baby. I <laughs>